So now we come to one of Reason's best features, and that's its ability to record audio in various different ways. In previous sections, we've had a look at how audio is rooted a little bit, but now we're going to have a look at how you can record audio and work with audio inside Reason. So the first thing that you'll need to do, of course, is to have some sort of audio interface attached to your Mac. Um, now, you can use the built-in sound card, if you like. That will work but it won't be fantastic quality compared to an audio interface and it also won't offer you great latency settings. And latency is the gap between playing a note, in this case making a sound, and hearing it back through the software. Now latency isn't a huge problem in Reason because it's nicely optimized for faster computers. And if you go into the audio preferences, we looked at this in the first setting up section. Here you can see that I have my buffer size set to 256 samples, which is a nice trade-off between not placing too much of a strain on the computer, but also enabling sound to get in and out without any significant delays. Again, in the setup section, we looked at the input and output channels. Mine happens to only have two. This one I'm using at the moment. Uh, you can click the control panel button and then um, just check out exactly what's set up on your system. So we have sound coming into Reason here through our Xiosynth. Yours might be anything, uh, an Mbox, an M Audio interface, or something like that. I just close that. At the top of the rack here, you have Reason's audio input section, and you can see at the moment that my uh, voice is actually coming through and registering as an input. It's also registering on a little input meter down at the bottom, which is much the same as this one here, except this meter at the bottom displays audio for any channel, whereas on the audio in section here, you can see it specifically coming in and out on any of the channels you have set up. If I press the tab key to spin the rack around, You can see this is our audio I.O. device. And you can see at the moment we've got audio coming in on channels one and two. And we've got audio going from our master section here up to main outputs one and two. We'll have a look a bit later on at how to get a bit more creative with these if you want to do some more advanced routing. Uh, but for now, that's, that's all you need to know at this moment about those. Every time you create an instrument or an audio track device in Reason, if I create an audio track here, that is an audio track module. And that is basically a way of connecting the sequencer track to the mixer up here. So audio is recorded into the sequencer. It goes through an audio track module in the rack and it's then sent to the mixer. And from the mixer, it's sent to the main audio outputs of Reason. If I create uh, an instrument, let's say, it doesn't really matter what it is, Thor, that gets a mix module. And that has much the same function as an audio track module, uh, except that it, it acts as an interface not between an audio track and the mixer, but between an instrument's audio outputs and the mixer. You can rename these fairly easily. That's quite important when you start to get slightly larger projects. And if I minimize the rack and have a look, in fact, let's have a look at the mixer. There we go. Every device in the rack has a mixer channel you can navigate these rather large control strips using this shortcut bar at the right. And all of these mixer channels are the same in the sense that they have the same controls on them. We'll look at that in more detail in the mixer section later on. So it's important to understand the relationship between Reason's three main sections. The sequencer is where audio is recorded into and edited. It runs through an audio track module, or in the case of an instrument, the MIDI runs through an instrument and then a mix module, and it's passed from there 
to the mixer and from the mixer it is passed normally to the stereo outputs of reason or if you repatch things manually it's uh, passed to whichever outputs you send it to so that's a quick overview let's have a look next at getting set up for audio recording and playback